Lewis in session, April 8th and 9th, at the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations. Chairman O'Malley Yeshatela says black liberation is in the lesson plan. It's really interesting because it's something that used to happen back in the old days when Africans were just getting involved a lot in electoral politics in this country, even within the civil rights movement, to get people elected. And the first school of this sort that I ever attended was something like 1964-65 in Frogmore, South Carolina. SNCC, Congress of Racial Equality, were some of the people who were there. Uh, Ken Gibson was there after his first defeat when he ran for mayor of Newark. Percy Sutton was there. He became borough president in Manhattan and New York. So these schools are not extraordinary, but it's extraordinary for this period of time because back in the 1960s, Africans were just trying to seriously enter into political life, particularly in the South, to take on the electoral question. Now we find ourselves in a different position where so many black people have become elected officials who don't serve the black community as was assumed would be the case, and they have become a part of the establishment in most instances to the detriment of our community and any kind of movement for social justice and for black power in this country. Yes, back in the mid-60s, you could count the black elected officials in significant positions on two hands. Now there are thousands of them, and the Congressional Black Caucus has more than 40 members, but one is hard-pressed to say what that's worth. So how is the Black is Back electoral school going to deal with black electoral politics in the 21st century? Well, the Black is Back coalition didn't simply come up and say, let's do a school. We've been pushing the idea of having self-determination on the agenda for almost eight years now. Within the last seven or eight months, we hosted different kinds of conferences, national conference, state and national conventions putting forth a national black political agenda for self-determination that says that it's not good enough just to have some kind of program of your own if you're running for office because that doesn't make you accountable to anybody except yourself. So let's win this notion among the masses of our people that what we need is a national black political agenda for self-determination that deals with some of these critical issues that are affecting our community as a consequence of the colonial relationship that we have to America. We want reparations, that's a part of it, that we want African women to be freed from all of the constraints placed on them by the system and by backwardness even within our own community that we want to see the release of all of these political prisoners who are rotting their lives away and their crime being simply that they tried to advocate in one way or another the liberation of black people in this country. I mean, these are critical questions that we are trying to address through this National Black Political Agenda for Self-Determination. And this is what we have in this school, and we want to unleash a whole new force of people, many of whom were awakened by August 9th, 2014, when Mike Brown was gunned down and Ferguson and the masses rose up. We see a whole new wave of activism emerging, but it is an activism that doesn't have a message, doesn't have any kind of demands, and we're trying to bring as many of those people as possible into this process and then inject them into the electoral system, the electoral process, based on a struggle for national black self-determination and organizing around the demands that we put forth in the political agenda coming from the coalition. So part of what will be going on at this electoral school is to examine the relationship between the 19 points that were put forward on self-determination and how that relates to a political campaign.
to simply educate African people or to bring African people into the electoral process and to give them whatever kinds of technique that can be provided within this two-day period alone is simply to be organizing people for the Democratic Party. But the first part of this stuff is to acquaint African people in this country with the history of the relationship that we have to the electoral process itself, going all the way back from the three-fifths of a person that debate that, interestingly enough, the South was saying they got to be counted as full persons. And then examining things like Reconstruction, where we thought we really had it made now, because some people were able to get elected, and then how we were double-crossed by the party that we had all confidence at that time, which is the Republican Party, who got together with the Democratic Party. And what they did was facilitate the rise of the Ku Klux Klan that exacerbated the terror that we already faced in this country for almost another hundred years. And we're talking now about the Civil Rights Movement and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and how the liberals double-crossed us in 1964 at Atlantic City in the Democratic National Convention there, where they were going to seat the black Democrats from Mississippi as opposed to that white lynch mob, and they didn't. We'll go all the way through the electoral process, and that's going to be a critical thing. We want to help people to understand, first of all, that most of what could be considered an advance that we've got as a people in this country came outside of the electoral process, that we didn't get the right to vote through voting. We got the right to vote through struggle. And then we can get into this real critical questions about the platform itself and going back to Douglas that power can seize nothing without a demand. And these are our demands that should be embraced by black people throughout this country and by anybody who finds themselves or call themselves an ally of black people should be uniting with these demands as well. And then to provide what kind of techniques we can in terms of how to run a campaign, what constitutes a good campaign, these kinds of things are going to be really important. And then we look at the 19 points, we're talking about how do you put reparations in your campaign? How do you deal with black community control of the police? How do we run on that? And can we do things like establishing ballot initiatives where reparations is on the ballot, similar to what's happening in Chicago and some other places where cities have forced companies to do slavery disclosure and connections to show the connections that these companies have with slavery as a condition for doing business and then, of course, to give it teeth. These are the kinds of things that we're going to really be talking about and how do we push these things using this electoral process and using it as a means by which we bring African people back into political life who might be what people like to characterize as more conscious these days, but to bring them into political life and to have them engage the system itself based on ideas, based on platform, based on interest. And this is the thing that helps the community to coalesce around its own self-interest, its own selfish interest, as opposed to praying that a good white person is going to take the right position or a good Democrat is going to take the right position and hopefully represent us in some ambiguous way. Go to blackisbackcoalition.org. We've got incredible presenters who will be helping to make this school successful. They include New York State Assemblyman Charles Barron, Zaki Baroudi, who will be participating from St. Louis. We've got John Dew, who is a legendary civil rights attorney. Brother Khalid Rahim, coming out of Pittsburgh, who is with the New African Independence Party. So it's going to be a dynamic school. It's going to provide the technical information, the kind of political information that we need in order to unleash masses of black people from throughout this country in a new way in the electoral process because they're not expecting us and they're not expecting to have to answer questions about reparations, political prisoners, mass incarceration of black people, free health care, free education, that kind of thing. And we will be putting it forth in a very unabashed fashion. So go to blackisbackcoalition.org, indicate that you want to come, register, and donate money too because we're still struggling to get the kind of resources to make this a success.